A happy Easter Saturday, dear sisters. It's great to drop by and just greet all of you. I saw Ella's invitation. By the way, we are 134 now. 34. I'm looking at 134 frames in Facebook. And that's more than that because we are live stream. Right? And I hope and pray that there are more out there listening to us. Right? And I saw that in the chat room of invitation of, of Ella. I really wish to just honor all of you, dear, gorgeous sisters. And I am amazed at how you all can come up or come out with such creative and pastoral events. It shows the maturity of your spirituality. You have depth and virtues. I am especially grateful for the gift of unity and solidarity between and among the territorial women. You make a good model of sisterhood and I am so proud of you. You just gel so well and your solidarity with each other shines. I also wish to thank in advance once more the women of Mid North in committing the lead, the love, and any language. That's a byline for <laughs> Life in Christ seminar. I know that our Lord, whose feast we will be celebrating tomorrow, the feast of the divine mercy, will grant to you all the graces for you and your family for your commitment to evangelism. So I leave you now. God bless you all and may Mama Bye. Mary continue to guide and guard you to Jesus. I love you all. Thank you for having me. God bless. Thank you so much, Tito Ed. Um, we're honored to have you here with us today. And now I'd like to call on Sister Maribel, who also wants to, to you know, welcome you all to this Mary's Virtual Coffee Club session that we have today. Sister Maribel. Okay. <clears throat> Happy Easter, dear women of God. Every moment is grace. And as uh, St. Therese of Avila puts it, all is grace. And we are alive. That's grace, right? Thank you, Lord. You are all here. That's grace. Thank you, Lord. So it's the eighth day of the octave of Easter. And so we shout in our hearts, our hallelujahs. That is what we are. That's what we do for Easter. And today's theme is a woman of God. It's brought to you by the women of the Mid-North, as uh, our brother Ed mentioned. Illinois and its mission territories. Uh, during the Holy Week and Easter, Jesus had a special place for women. And remember the woman who anointed his feet with oil? Jesus exhorted his apostles to let her be. And little did they know that act of using expensive oil was a prelude to the anointing of his uh, body for burial. So Veronica, the other woman who wiped his face <clears throat> and to whom he left an imprint of his face, and the women of Jerusalem at the station of the cross, whom Jesus asked not to weep for him, but for themselves, for the days were uh, coming when women would not want to nurse their young and prefer to be barren. And we are surrounded now, especially in the USA and in the Western Hemisphere, uh, in the Northern, um, in the Americas where our brother Ed heads and the mission territories of the USA with radical feminists who advocate abortion and have redefined the role of women away from God's plan. 
the three women at the foot of the cross and who were there in various scenes of the resurrection, Mary of Bethany, the sister of Lazarus, who loved to just be present, as Sister Ella mentioned earlier with Jesus and the lover of the word of God. She taught us the essence of deep prayer and to pray not with words, but bask in the presence of our Lord. Mary of Magdala or Mary, Mary Magdalene, who was extolled by the church as the apostle of the apostles because she was the first woman at the tomb on Easter and was instructed by Jesus to spread the word to his apostles that he was alive. Mother Mary, of course, for whom we were entrusted by our Lord and for whom we too were asked to consecrate ourselves to. She's the queen of heaven and earth. So today, we ask the Holy Spirit with fervent hearts to speak about his mission for us in today's session. So I exhort everyone, listen with your hearts because there is a new way by which the Spirit will speak to us and reveal to us a new mission in today's session. So it doesn't matter what we know. It doesn't matter what we think we know. What matters is that we will know as we open our hearts what the mission of today's talks will be for us. And the Holy Spirit blows where he wills. We are the women of God. We are the Easter women. Our hearts proclaim hallelujah. So God bless you all, dear uh, Easter women, dear women of God. Okay, so I pass it back to our dear Ella Rabor. Thank you so much, Mr. Maribel. Um, yes, thank you for that inspiring exhortation. And um, again, I apologize. I didn't even introduce myself earlier. My name is Ella Rabor. I'm one of the um, of the uh, handmaids here in the mid north, and um, I hail from Chicago, Illinois. So, sisters, um, just a quick uh, review before we proceed. We um, got these housekeeping rules. Uh, if you can allow me to share my screen, Brother Ron. Okay, thank you. So just the Zoom etiquette for all of us. Uh, I know that you already know all of this, uh, but just a quick reminder, um, please mute yourselves when a speaker is presenting. So if you're not a speaker, then please mute yourself. But we do ask you to turn on your videos at all times because we do want to see your lovely faces. And if you haven't done so yet, please rename yourselves because we do want to know who's um, here with us and we want to get to know you. Um, so uh, you can, if you see here, um, you know, where to, to rename yourselves, you just click on that, um, click on that participants button and right click on your name. And then it should pop up the option for you to rename yourselves. And we just want you to uh, put your name in there and uh, from where you're from, whether, you know, an indication of the state or if you're in the Philippines, you can indicate uh, Philippines. And then we suggest that you use earphones or headsets for better sound quality of the presentations. If you don't have that and you're, you're you know, you're, you're, um, you're okay with your sound, then that's fine. And we invite you to um, inform us of any technical issues through the chat back box. The box, the ch chat box is right there on the bottom. And you can tell us if you know there's a, you're not hearing us or the video is not playing well and all that. We would really appreciate that. And you can also um, greet everyone through that chat box. And we invite you to write down notes and uh, maintain a prayerful attitude at all times. Okay. So sisters, um, before we, we start with our, um, with our session for today, I invite all of you to um, join me in prayer. So let us all put, yourself, put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 
Father God in heaven, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for being our God and for giving us life, Lord God, for all the blessings that you've showered us with. You have uh, gathered us all today to uh, spend time with you, Lord, and with each other. You have given us this opportunity and this privilege to clear our schedules, uh, leave our cares for a time, and to soak up just uh, this time and uh, in your presence, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for this blessing. And we ask you uh, to please give us an expectant and listening heart, Lord. May you uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may hear what you want us to hear from the message. May we receive what you want us to receive, Lord God. And we ask for your favor, Lord, that you would uh, continue to protect us, protect our families, uh, take care of their needs as we spend this time with you. We continue to ask you, Lord, to keep us um, in the palm of your hand. And uh, let us offer this song in praise and worship. Oh dear God, we ask for your favor. Come and sweep through this place. Oh, we desire I just want to be with you, be where you are, dwell in your presence, oh God. Oh, I want to walk with you, and I will climb this mountain, and I step on the shore. our mother, our model for womanhood, we ask that you continuously, you continuously pray for us and intercede for us, Mama Mary, that we may grow closer to becoming like you, that we may draw strength and encouragement from the talks that we're going to be having today. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you. So, sisters, um, before we start, I'd like to share a story. Um, a wise man shared this uh, story with me. Um, there were two lumberjacks. So they were um, cutting wood for the day, right? One of them um, took a break, took a break, uh, went home, did whatever. After 15 minutes, he came back. While the other one just went on and, you know, continued with his work, chopping wood, um, never taking a break. Now, at the end of four hours, the other one, the lumberjack that did not, did not take a break, looked to the other one that took a break and saw that he even he even had more wood chopped compared to him. So he asked him, hey, what did you do? Well, how come you're, you have more wood chopped? You have more, uh, your productions more than mine when I didn't stop and, you know, took a break. And the other one said, I didn't take a break. I went home and sharpened my ax. So sisters, today, this session that we're having today is like you stopping what you're doing, stopping your busyness and going home to sharpen your ax. So to set the tone for our session for today, let me ask Sister Lucy to share our a video that we have prepared for you. By the time the Lord made woman, he was on his sixth day of working overtime. An angel appeared and said, Lord, why are you spending so much time on this one? Have you seen my spec sheet on her? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have over 200 movable parts, all replaceable and able to run on Diet Coke and leftovers. Have a lap that can hold four children at one time. Have a kiss that can cure anything from a scraped knee to a broken heart, and she will do everything with only two hands. Mm. Only two hands? No way. And that's just on a standard model? That's too much work for one day. Wait until tomorrow to finish. But I won't. I am so close to finishing this creation that is so close to my own heart. She already heals herself when she is sick and can work 18 hour days. But you have made her so soft, Lord. She is soft. I have also made her tough. You have no idea what she can endure or accomplish. Will she be able to think? Not only will she be able to think, she will be able to reason and negotiate. Oh, it looks like you have a leak on this model. I told you that you were trying to put too much time on this one. That's not a leak. That's a tear. What? Well, what's the tear for? The tear is her way of expressing her joy, her sorrow, her pain, her disappointment, her love, her loneliness, her grief, and her pride. Mm, you are a genius, Lord. You thought of everything. Woman is truly amazing. And she is. Women have strengths that amaze men. They bear hardships and they carry burdens, but they hold happiness, love, and joy. They smile when they want to scream. They sing when they want to cry. They cry when they are happy and laugh when they are nervous. They fight for what they believe in. They stand up to injustice. They don't take no for an answer when they believe there is a better solution. They go without so their family can have. They go to the doctor with a frightened friend. They love unconditionally. 
They cry when their children excel and cheer when their friends get awards. They are happy when they hear about a birth or a wedding. Their heart breaks when a friend dies. They grieve at the loss of a family member, yet they are strong when they think there is no strength left. They know that a hug and a kiss can heal a broken heart. Women come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. They'll drive, fly, walk, run, or email you to show how much they care about you. The heart of a woman is what makes the world keep turning. They bring joy, hope, and love. They have compassion and ideals. They give moral support to their family and friends. Women have vital things to say and everything to give. However, if there is one flaw in women, it is that they forget their worth. Sir Lisi, please um, play the next video.
Thank you, Sister Lucy. That was, those were really nice uh, videos, isn't it, sisters? Um, they serve to remind us that we are women. We are made special by God. And we are strong. We are truly wise. God has gifted us so much. We can be invincible. But we know that circumstances in life can, you know, um, wear us down. We can be overwhelmed. And we can find ourselves really um, in the mire. Today, let us come together and uh, focus on God and be reminded again of how he made us really um, special as a woman. Let us um, leave our cares behind and let us be like Mary. Let us be open. Let us um, be ready to just soak up um, inspiring words from God. And to start with, I would like to call on um, Amy Albertine from Lyle, Illinois. She will be giving us uh, the first stop. Sister Amy. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Amy Albertine from Illinois. My talk today is entitled, A Call to Holiness. Before I, show, I start my talk, let me just show you my small uh, uh, a video. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. Mother Teresa, these are words which we would all agree with. But the difference between us and you is that we don't put them into action. We don't do anything about them. Even though we might want to do it, we still don't. Now, all of these words don't, to me, to you, just don't mean food and drink and clothes. They mean love. When did it all start for you? When did you start to put these words into action? Since 1940, 46, actually doing this close contact with the poorest of the poor. But before that, it was a vocation from the time I was 12 years old. 12. That calling to, be, to belong to Jesus. Were you a religious family? Had you been brought up to believe, as you do now, that everything was for God? Yes, I think my mother was a very holy uh, woman and so she imparted that love for God and love for the neighbor very much into all her children's hearts. Now back in India 20 years later when you got the feeling that you had to do something else you had to go out to the poor yeah. how did you go about that because you had taken your final vows and it must have been difficult for you to give up the final vows and such was it? I didn't have to give up anything because it vocation is uh, belonging to Christ and um, the work is only a means to put our love for Christ into action and so I had only to change so to say the way of uh, work the means I had to change to work for the poorest of the poor so my vocation was a continuation of belonging to Christ and being only his I was hungry, you gave me to eat what I When I was hungry, you gave me to eat when I was thirsty.
call to holiness. God's call to holiness is a universal call to each and every one of us. We are called to live holy lives as women of God, so we can experience the fullness of life in Jesus Christ. God calls. When you hear Jesus calling you, will you respond to the call with a yes? Let us see how the holy men and women in the Bible responded when God called them. First, he called Abraham. He said, now the Lord said to Abraham, go leave your country and your kindred and your father's house and to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, that you will be a blessing to others. That totally changed his life, transformed him into a holy man. All of us experience being called to leave our com comfort zone, to leave our country, or move to a different state, town, or to a different role in life for a purpose. For me personally, I left the Philippines to come to Chicago to fulfill my dream to work as a nurse in one of the hospitals abroad to have a better life. For that, I became a blessing to my family, my relatives and friends and my country. I was able to send financial help to my parents and relatives that needed help. I thought at first that it was through my own efforts that I got where I am. Little did I know that it was God's plan for me. Who would think that he would also call me to be his worker in bringing the good news of Christ to others through the community that I serve. I'm sure you too were called to come to where you are now so you can also be a blessing to others. So never waste a moment. Be a blessing to someone. Lift someone up. That's a life. Encourage a soul. The next he called Isaiah. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. It again elicited immediate response and obedience, a desire to serve the Lord. It produced an overwhelming sense of unworthiness, of humility, and it did transform him into one of the greatest prophets, into a holy man. So like Isaiah, can we also respond with a yes, Lord, here I am when you are asked to serve in your parish church or in the community where you belong. The next he called Peter. As he walked the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, I will make you fishers of men. It elicited immediate response. Peter left his trade and followed Jesus everywhere. It produced a deep realization of his sinfulness. He began to humble and he was transformed into a holy man. When Peter Simon saw the miracle that Jesus did, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, depart from me for I am a simple man. They gave up the, their life as fishermen, left their old lifestyle, and followed Jesus into a new life. And before they were through, God used them to change the world. So let us also follow Jesus and obey his commands. Go deeper, throw your nets for a catch. If you decide to lay it down and follow him, you will never regret it. 
The next he called Mary. This is in Luke 1, 26 to 38. Take note of this. This is the Annunciation. Mary answered, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed her. It elicited immediate response, elicited humility. She became the holy vessel to bring forth a holy God. Mary answered with her resounding yes. Her fiat at that very moment, our salvation started. What happened if Mother Mary did not say yes? Then we wouldn't have a savior. We can also say yes. There is nothing more important in our spiritual life than to say yes to Jesus with all our heart and soul. Then allow the Holy Spirit to work out the meaning of that yes. You may have said yes many times in your life before, and yet today, He may be calling you to go much deeper. So God's call is very clear and specific. We need to realize that from the very beginning, God made us in His image and likeness, thus to be holy like Him. God issues His call to His chosen people. In Leviticus 19 verse 2, the Lord told Moses to say to the community of Israel, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, I am holy. So God makes it clear to us that holiness is a re requisite for membership in his nation. If we consider himself his people, then we must be holy like him. We are all called to holiness of life. So what then is holiness? The holy means whole. Holy, the word sums up everything that we know and say about God. It indicates the totality of His excellence, all the qualities of His greatness and goodness. For a person to be holy, he must, he is to be set apart for God, to be dedicated or be consecrated to Him alone. Holiness it speaks about the absence of sin and a closeness to God. In Leviticus 11, 44-45, I am the Lord your God, you must Keep yourselves holy, because I am holy. I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt so I could see your God. You must be holy, because I am holy. Very clearly, God commands us to dedicate ourselves to Him. Holiness, therefore, is God-likeness. We are to reflect the very image and likeness of God. So how can we become holy? We have to realize that there are obstacles in growing in childlikeness. We need to be able to recognize these obstacles, not to dwell on them, but to overcome them. These obstacles are deafness to God's call, Fear of the cost of being holy, fear of failure, sin, or wrongdoing. So deafness to God's call. We do not hear His call because we do not know His voice. We do not recognize His voice. Why? Because we do not know Him in a real sense. We do not know Him because... We have no relationship yet with Him. The second, fear of the cost of being holy. 
there is an apprehension as to what entails to live a holy life. And we fear that there we will fail. Some of the impression that holiness is an ideal that's difficult to achieve. So we just need to strive to do your best and God will do the rest for us. Sin or wrongdoing. We sin because we refuse to obey God's will. We commit sin and we run away feeling guilty. Instead, we should run back to him because he is there always waiting for us with his arms outstretched, ready to embrace us. So we could simply run to God and ask for mercy because we have a merciful God. There is no sin that is greater than his love for us. We must have the right mental frame. Put the call in its proper framework. We are made in the image and likeness of God. In Genesis 1:27, God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. But God also gave us the gift of free will. We are given many choices. We choose our fat of life, but it is more rewarding to choose him. God designed us to be holy in human fashion, yet embodying his righteousness, faithfulness, justice, beauty, and above all, love. God designed us to be capable of perfection. This perfection of huma humanity is Jesus Christ. He is our model, human and God-like. God has brought us by the blood of Jesus. We are free to lead lives of holiness. And in 1 Peter 1, 14 to 15, like obedient children, do not act in compliance with the desires of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. If you notice, this is for the third time that he is telling us to be holy. Though we are weak, and the call is difficult, we must realize that the grace of God is more than sufficient for us to be holy. It is written in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 to 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let us cling to God during our weakest moments and hardest times. For God is a rewarder of those who seek him and cling to him. I am a living witness to that. The most difficult storm and painful moment in my life happened when my 15 years of marriage failed, ended up in a divorce, and later on, annulment. My husband simply walked away from me and our 11-year-old son and said, I am no longer happy with you. What hurts more was when I found out later that there was another woman involved. I was deeply hurt and wounded, and I felt betrayed. It was the lowest point in my life, and I really felt I hit rock bottom. I couldn't let go. It was difficult for me to forgive. 
forgive him for the pain that he had caused me. And you know what? I want to get even with him. I pray to God to take away the pain and let him have the same pain that I was going through. But God, in his infinite love and goodness and infinite power, he answered me with an invitation to a Christian life seminar. The talk, Loving Thy Neighbor, was the reason for my conviction and transformation. That talk totally changed my life and made me a strong person than I am now. I distinctly remembered the speaker saying, loving thy neighbor is the second greatest commandment. And he said, do you know who is your first neighbor? Do you know that your spouse is your first neighbor? And I, in the back there listening, crying out, you know, I was really hit hard. I said, how can I love him when I have yet to forgive him and I refuse to forgive? Furthermore, he said in 1 John 24, 1 John 4, verse 20 to 21, he said, if someone says that he loves God but hates his brother, is a liar. For he cannot love God whom he has not seen if he does not love his brother whom he has seen. The words were so sharp, it touched my heart and moved me. That really made me cry because I didn't want to listen to that. But I heard him loud and clear. I think he tried to open my eyes to let me see where I have fallen short big time. So I heard it very loud and clear saying, love your neighbor, pray for your enemies. The command to love was very strong. So I prayed to the Holy Spirit. And with much prayer, with God's grace, with the power of the Holy Spirit, I was able to forgive that person that led to my brokenness. Forgiveness was the key to my healing. God picked up the pieces of my broken heart and made me whole again. There I found true peace that I have not felt for a long time. There was peace with myself, my son, my ex-husband, and with my God. I became a member of that community and I continued to serve him until this present time. It's been 22 years since that happened, and that was the best thing that ever happened to me when I found God in my life. And I want to quote the saying from an anonymous author. What I have in God is much greater than what I do not have in life. So let us claim the promise of His grace whenever we need it. What God promises, he will keep. So sisters and brothers, holiness is not an option. It is a call. And in Hebrew 12 verse 14, he strive for peace with everyone and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So if there is someone in your life that you are not in peace with is strive for that peace so in the end you will see the face of god that is why the bible teaches us to strive for holiness we need always to do this and set our minds on way to holiness we are to be holy in the ordinary circumstances of our lives in whatever state we are, God is calling us to be holy. If we turn our attention to God, we will encounter Him. If we encounter Him, we will be changed as we face the holiness of God. So, let us take 
concrete steps. Decide to be holy, to live for God, and to be owned by Him. Say to yourself and repeat it to yourself often, I am a woman of God, His handmaid. I shall be holy like Him. Then, consciously develop good habits that will lead to virtues. Examples, your loving ways such as thoughtfulness, helpfulness, and generosity. Be forgiving, forgive, and let go of the power that only destroys yourself. Let go and let God. Live simply so others may simply live. Simplicity is beauty and simple things in life gives us joy. Have a cheerful disposition, a joyful attitude. Be the person that when you walk in an, into a room, it lights up by your presence. You can make a difference in someone's life. Do a simple act of kindness because kindness is love in action. Always wear a smile. And Mother Teresa said, we can do no great things, only small things, but with great love. And then establish a deep connection to the source of holiness. And who is our source of holiness? God. Develop a deep and faithful prayer time. Be consistent with your scripture reading. You know there is a saying that goes, show me a Bible that is falling apart and I will show you a person that is put together. Show me a Bible that is put together and I will show you a person that is falling apart. So hold on to your Bibles and do not let it collect dust. Talk to God constantly during your quiet times with him and throughout the day. Beware of pride and self-righteousness cause us we purposely strive for holiness, Satan will be on the prowl to sabotage us. As we grow in holiness, be humble. In conclusion, God calls all his people to holiness. This is his call to each one of you. Let us ask the intercession of Mama Mary that our hearts would fully embrace the way of holiness. Respond to his call by saying, Here I am, Lord. I am ready to do your will. To God be the glory. Thank you for listening. Now, let me call on my sharer, Sister Linda Indai Lapot from Michigan. Thank you, Sister Amy. Uh, that was a very, a very powerful uh, discussion or a very powerful, very touching uh, teaching of yours. And with that, um, I would like to, um, to connect my sharing with your uh, teachings. Okay, so good afternoon to our sisters in the East and also good morning to our sisters in the West part of the country and to whichever part you are in the world. I am tasked to be a sharer and a call to holiness. With a humble and joyful heart, I am here to share how God works in me to a life of holiness. I hope that you can pick up and learn from this sharing and how God leads us to a life of holiness. But I am still a work in progress. I'm not perfect yet. In Leviticus 19 verse two, it says, you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. To be holy, we need to work for it. We need a deep relationship with God, and I do it by establishing a regular prayer life, 
every morning for me is my day to the Lord. Daily scripture and reading of spiritual books, receiving the Eucharist if possible daily, service or faith community. I serve as a secretary to the, uh, to the Missionary Families of Christ here in Michigan. Unconditional love to our family, to our workplace, uh, on, to your neighbors and to friends. I would like to relate my, my sharing with um, my migration here in the US. Every immigrant has a story to tell and God has his plan to make us holy. Before we left the Philippines, I supported my husband in serving as unit head. I was on the top of my career in the Philippines when I received a letter from the US embassy that my brother's petition, which was 22 years ago, for me was approved. Coming to the US was not really very attractive to me because I already enjoyed serving our household, serving the community. My career was doing well. Uh, income was good for a simple life. Attending CFC teachings and other activities was our way of life. However, my younger children wants to have their education here in the US. I decided to come as a mother's sacrificial love for my children. Now God's plan and the call to holiness Coming to the U.S. is a humbling experience. I was on the top of my career. Uh, I work as a dean of the College of Nursing in the Philippines. But when I came here in the U.S., I started from the very bottom. I work as a nursing assistant. I continued my service as, handmaid to the, uh, as a handmaid leader in Ohio. I first started in Ohio, then in Michigan. It made me more prayerful because the work was very physical to me. My family was split, six in the U.S. and three in the Philippines. Eventually, my whole family was here in the U.S., except a son left in the Philippines because he was over 21 years old. Now, the long and hard times. Our son has all the freedom to use our house, bring friends, and use our income. Neighbors were telling me that something serious is going on with our son over there. Eventually, we discovered who was into drinking, smoking, women, and shabu. Everyone in my family, from father and all siblings, were mad at him. Prayers are our only weapon and communication with him. He avoided to talk to me sometimes. I was the only one talking to him because everyone in the family was angry with him. I was on the crossroads to leave my children here in the US, but they need me for their education or go back to the Philippines and take care of this lost ship. Then the turning point. It was almost midnight here in the US when we received a call that our son got into a motor vehicle accident. He was brought to the hospital and was in the ICU with five fractures on his face. I felt the whole world drop on me at midnight. My husband and all our children were so mad. He is the problem child in the family. I heard all the negatives. Then the mother's uncontrollable, unconditional love. Indeed, we are the light in our family. I called everyone and gather at our altar and pray. I cried a lot but prayed for strength and God's wisdom. I decided to drop everything and fly to the Falcons the following day. I went straight to the hospital. He did not recognize me as his mother. I took care of him, changed his diapers, and since he was big and tall, there was a time that we both fall on the floor with his IV fluids. I pray the rosary aloud in the hospital room, read the gospel and sung our worship songs. Eventually he got improved and had his eye surgery for the fracture of his orbital bones. I talked to him every day and repeatedly mentioned God's love. I told him that it's a miracle that you are still alive. He nodded his head and looked at me. 
He cried and thanked God for his second life. Now, the accident changed the life of my son. He became holy. He changed from a life full of vices to a God-centered life. He now goes to Mass almost every day. He attends Mama Mary Novena every Wednesday. He no longer used Shabu. He got a good permanent job in the city government. And indeed, God is merciful and full of love and wants us all to become holy. I am so thankful to God for bringing back my son who was lost and now to, uh, to his fold and now becoming holy. As for myself, I can hear the whisperings of the Holy Spirit in situations which needs God's wisdom. I am more forgiving and loving. I have the courage to tell the executive board to revise policy and procedures because the spirit of the bylaws is love. They make joke and tell me, you are Santa Reglita. I feel I am more bold to practice God's love as part of our call to holiness and evangelize others. Truly, God helps us to become holy. All glory to God and his name we praise. Thank you, sisters. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Amy and Indai, for inspiring us with your sharing. You have truly shared with us that uh, we are all called to be holy. Holiness is not an option. Um, we are all made in God's image and likeness. And so we are also called to be holy like him. You have emphasized to us that God's grace is sufficient for us to get through everything so that we can all continue to strive to be holy. If we cling to him, if we rely on his grace, we will all be made holy and perfect, which is our destiny. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amy and um, Indai for your humble sharings. And now I'd like to call on Irene Puno. She's also from uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, to give us uh, the topic of uh, serving God. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Irene Puno from Skokie, oh, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, so the second talk is entitled Serving God Through Others. So let us begin by watching again a short video clip of St. Teresa of Calcutta. Now, Mother, you've decided to become a missionary of charity. You've gone into the streets of Calcutta. Can you tell me how you actually went about it? Because you, just to talk about somebody going into the streets and starting a new order and helping the dying, how did you actually, what was your first contact with the dying person? I was, I picked up the first person from the street and I found a woman lying in the street, eaten up by rats and so on. And I took her to the nearest hospital and they, they didn't seem to want her there. But because I insisted so much at last, they took her in. And from there I decided that I will find a place for them myself and uh, take care of them. Then I went to the municipality and I asked them for a place only, that the rest I would do myself for them. And they took me to this uh, Kali temple in Kaligat and offered me a a place of rest that they use for the pilgrims that come to worship the goddess Kali. And we have been there for 22 years now, and, and we have picked over 29,000 people from the streets of Calcutta in these 22 years. Where does this love begin? In our own family, in our own home. How does it begin? by praying together. Family that prays together stays together. 
The fruit of prayer is the deepening of faith. And the fruit of faith is love. And the fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. God has a plan for all of us, has a plan for our salvation. God has destined us for adoption to himself through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 12, Scripture says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will with his favor that is set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hope in Christ. The superabundance of God's love drove him to become the creator. His love inspired the incarnation. God destined us to be his daughters, his children, through Jesus on his initiative. In Jesus, we have redemption and forgiveness for our sins. We are slaves who have been freed, freed from sin and darkness. His love prepared an abode of peace for souls of goodwill. Heaven, we can now enter heaven. Heaven is calling us to share in the life of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what should then be our response to God? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 to 46, scripture says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy, goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Our response to God is to keep the pearl of great price attitude. Jesus, be all out for God. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, more than that, I even consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ. We realize that nothing compares with Jesus Christ. He is the pearl of great price, the treasures, and we have found him. And a concrete response is to go all out to love and serve God. We should serve God every single day of our lives. He deserves all possible obedience, honor, and eternal praise in return for all the numberless favors, blessings, and benefits he bestows upon us every day. As Christians, as followers of Christ, we have a covenant, a pledge of service where we can consecrate, where we concentrate or dedicate our best energies. Our whole attitude towards serving God is that 
our hearts are transformed into this a desire to serve God. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, the passage speaks of Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming human in appearance, humbling himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The passage exhorts us to do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than ourselves. For us to look out, not for our own interests, but those of others. Serving God requires a sacrifice of our time and resources. So what is the basis for serving others? A concrete expression of God's command to love. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. In John chapter 15, verse 12, scripture says, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. Within our covenant of service, Jesus gave us an example by the washing of the feet of the apostles. In John chapter 13, verse 4 to 5, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. Jesus demonstrated Christian love to be service love. But there is always a danger that we may just do the work for the sake of the work. This is where respect, love, and devotion come in that we do it for God. And that is why we try to serve as beautifully and joyfully as possible. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, Scripture says, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So whom do we serve? Is it possible to choose the people you will love and thus serve? By the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus tells us that all men who need our help are our neighbors, whom we are to love. Jesus tells us, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it to one of these least, my brethren, you did it to me. And whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. In particular, we serve those for whom we have basic responsibilities. Our immediate family, parents, children, spouse, brothers and sisters, our extended family, the people we live with, other relatives, the people we meet at work or work with, or as we exercise, our profession, people in our parish community or in our other communities, like the different uh, lay faith communities where we are, we are uh, members. So in what ways can we serve? First, we show concern for the needs of others. Have the attitude of attentiveness concern shown by our Blessed Mother at the wedding feast of Cana. In John chapter 2, verse 3, when the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And in 1 John chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, if someone who has worldly means sees a brother in need and refuses him compassion, how can the love of God remain in him? 
love not just in words but in action. Second, be available to people. Be there for others. The Blessed Virgin showed this in her visit to her cousin Elizabeth when she learned she was pregnant. Jesus invited children to come to him despite the disciples' concern about his need for rest. In Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16, scripture says, And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. Jesus was available to sinners, the sick, and even to his disciples' relatives. So third, we can express affection. When Jesus visited the, visited the tomb of Lazarus, he wept, manifesting his love. In John chapter 11, verse 35 to 36, Jesus, a scripture says, and Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. Fourth, be patient and forbearing. In Romans chapter 15, verse 1 to 5, Scripture says, We who are strong ought to put up with the failings and of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please our neighbor for the good, for building up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you fall upon me. For whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus. Fifth, give encouragement in Isaiah Chapter 35, verse 3 to 4. Strengthen hands that are feeble. Make firm knees that are weak. Say to the fearful of heart, be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. St. Paul, the greatest evangelizer, in his love, and service to the Lord, endured lashing, was beaten by the rod, was stoned. He experienced shipwreck a couple of times, hunger, thirst, and many sleepless nights of cold and exposure to the elements. He said that the sufferings of the present moment are not worthy to be compared with the glory to come. And so, despite this terrible ordeal, he kept on serving the Lord by evangelizing, and he finished the work he was called to do. It is now almost 13 years since my sister Agnes, a member of the MFC faith community, Handmaids, was taken seriously ill. She is to this day a quadriplegic, paralyzed from the neck down and intermittent, intermittently relies on a ventilator machine. She's a nurse by profession, so she knew immediately how seriously ill she was on the first night she was brought to the emergency room. That same night, she said this prayer, and I quote, Lord, I know this is going to be a long journey and I accept and surrender to your holy will. But please take care of my loved ones, guide and protect us, especially my children. She was hospitalized for seven months in four different facilities. 
through the years, she continues to have that deep faith in God and continues to serve God by offering efficacious prayers, offering her difficulties, her helplessness, her frustrations due to her disability and offering and uniting all her sufferings to the suffering of Jesus for the needs of the world, for conversion of sinners, for the souls in purgatory, for healing of the sick, for peace in the whole world, and for all those who are asking for her prayers. Thank God for the strength and all the graces he bestows on Agnes in her long suffering. Another sister of mine, Det, and I have been Agnes' primary caregivers 24-7, helping our brother-in-law who works full-time for Agnes and their four children. The kids then were all minor of age. So Det and I help our brother-in-law to take care of them in every possible way. And I took it upon myself to bring them the, to the religious education program, supporting the teachers by volunteering on Sunday as teacher's aid to help prepare the children to receive the sacraments while working full-time during the week. Growing up, our devout parents brought us to church regularly and go to confession regularly and gather us every night to pray the rosary. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, I follow and continue their good example by bringing the children to church for mass, receiving the sacrament of penance and until their high school level joins us every night in our evening prayers. In 2015, I was diagnosed with colon cancer and have undergone colorectal surgery. By the mercy of God, it was early detection, and I did not need any treatment after the surgery. It is almost seven years now, and I thank God for the gift of life, for me and for Agnes, for his grace and mercy, to be able to continue to serve, praise, and worship God. I am a member of the Missionary Families of Christ Handmaids, a lay faith community, I have been called and have been serving our Lord in this community for the past 21 years. It is one of the great blessings to receive because of the privilege to know, love, and serve God and my brethren. The love and prayers offered for us sustained, comforted, and strengthened all of us as we rise above the difficulties and many challenges of our family life. And by God's mercy and our Blessed Mother, they have shown us timely help and many, many consolations during setbacks. And by God's grace and his will, I continue to serve him through my family, the MFC faith community and parish and other opportunities of grace to love and serve the Lord. As St. Claire of Assisi said, love God, serve God, Everything is in that. Your parish and many lay Christian communities provide perfect vehicles for service, volunteer in the different ministries in the parish, the liturgical lay ministry, cantors, if you can sing, and music ministry, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, ministry of care and altar servers. Join and support the evangelization and mission work of different lay communities of faith, like the MFC. As we serve, which is a major tool for growth, we grow as Christians. We acquire wisdom as we continually accept teachings and apply them in our lives. Faithfulness to God, to his word, and each other will characterize our lives. We shall then be servants who serve without expecting to be acknowledged, appreciated, and rewarded. We should open our hearts, our eyes, and our ears to more and more opportunities to serve 
because then we can become co-workers of Christ in his work of healing and salvation. Then at last we can say, I am a woman of God and with the help of Mary, our blessed mother, as we stay close to her, as we give birth to Jesus in our hearts, we can truly say, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. May God be praised. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Sister Irene. That was truly inspiring. Thank you for your humble sharing of your life and, and uh, your sister's life as well. Um, you reminded us today that God made us all special in love and lavished us with everything that we need to accomplish all good things. He has called us to serve him in very special ways as mothers, as daughters, as sisters, as friends. As women, we are all powerfully equipped to serve others because we have such big hearts. Let me remind you of what St. Mother Teresa had said in the video that, we, that Irene showed us. It begins with prayer and prayer begets faith. Faith begets love, love, begets service, and humble service begets peace. And isn't it that peace is what we truly aspire in this world, in, the, in our lives? Peace can also be achieved by healing of our inner turmoils, the hurts that we have in our hearts. And to connect with the second, uh, with the next talk, um, with inner healing, let us all focus on um, the inner healing that God can give us. May I call on um, Lucy, also from Chicago, Illinois, to give us this uh, talk on inner healing. Lucy, we can't hear you. Okay, yeah, I noticed it, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, let me share to you my um, video. Now, right through yeah. history, all the great saints, I presumably to mind, had great doubts about their faith. They had great moments of absolute darkness when they wondered if there was a God at all. Have you ever had that darkness? We all have to go through it. I, yes. But that is the chance, that is the time when we have to take greater grip and accept it to offer as a sign of purification of great and greater love. And that is the, that's the cross at that time. When you say we have to take great grip, uh, what exactly do you do when you have a moment cling, of darkness? Cling to Christ, because he is the only answer. And it's something so beautiful that love begins at home and that can spread like a burning fire from house to house. We will spread throughout the world peace, joy, unity and love. I call it a revolution of love. Okay. Um, oh, hang on, just a second. There you go. Now, right through history, all the great saints, right? Priest of Avila would come immediately to mind. Okay, good afternoon again, everyone. And um, thank God and thank you all for uh, coming in today. <clears throat> what a beautiful short video of Mother Teresa about love. Her good example of prayers, love and service, like Mama Mary, are the keys to holiness and also the keys for inner healing. 
and that is the title of this session, Inner Healing. And the objectives to understand and appreciate the importance of inner healing and to start the process of inner healing. The, as we serve others like our Mother Teresa did, and as what Irene said, in trying to live holy lives, it's on Amy's message, we may face one major stumbling block like uh, our hurts, our inner wounds and pain, our brokenness and more. If we are willing to move on, we need to, free, to be freed from all of these uh, unwanted things in our lives. God's way is healing and Jesus demonstrated that in his time. It is important to know that different kinds of sicknesses require different kinds of prayers so that we can appropriate fully the healing that God wants us to experience. And the four basic kindness or kinds of sicknesses and corresponding healings are physical sickness, which needs the appropriate medicine for healing, emotional sickness, that requires inner healing, personal sin, it needs repentance. Demonic oppression, it needs deliverance. Our focus, our focus today is on inner healing, which is the healing of inner man. By inner man, we meant the intellectual, volitional, and effective areas commonly referred to as mind, will, and heart, including such other areas related to emotions, soul, and spirit. But um, why inner healing? Sometimes um, because we need inner healing, we believe we all have hurts inside us. But most of us, for some reasons, are not fully aware of it. This may be hurts that we ex experienced in the past. Hurts of suffering from scars of trauma or painful memories from our past, even when we were young. Unconsciously, we carry them within us and become obstacles to positive and open relationships. Sometimes, we experience some fear or alienation to some people, which we may not even understand because uh, we bury that hurt deep inside. And we should always remember that in any kind of relationship, hearts can happen in various ways and can affect our life or our whole life. It could happen through deliber deliberate acts, like we may speak unkindly or carelessly and expect others to understand. We should always remember that everyone is different from others in every way, that sometimes we look on something differently than the, others, the other person does. Through insensitivity to another's needs or expectation. Maybe some do not need any explanation, but others do. Or maybe the person that you expected to give you comfort also needs to be comforted. Next is scars and memories of past sins or guilt. Sometimes our past sins continue to have a hold on us as, uh, as we find it hard to even forgive ourselves. I know someone uh, personally that after she attended uh, LSS, one like our CLS, she was so guilty and cannot forgive herself because she did something bad before. She said she keeps on going and going to the confession to confess her sins, but she doesn't know if God has forgiven her. Bear in mind that Jesus had already bought us through his blood. Last is... Um, fears and insecurities these oftentimes arising because our because of past experiences and allow me to share my experience when my mother told me a long time ago that um because we were so poor we cannot afford to send uh, she cannot afford to send me to school and i need to help them what's my younger sister and work in the rice field 
and I don't care about helping, and I love the rice field. But if you are poor, you think higher education is the only way to get out of that situation. But what hurts me the most was one time, my mother told me to get something in town and the only transportation that I could use was the student service where some of my former classmates were using. You know, we were in the middle of nowhere in, in the old days. These classmates of mine were my friends in school. But that morning, no one even said hello to me. If you were born in the Philippines, you know that the jeep was public transportation facing its other. But they were all looking in one direction, and that was almost an hour. I didn't tell anything to my mother, but uh, I was crying inside almost every day. I think I was crying, thinking just because they can go to school and I can't. And that may be the main reason why I became so stubborn, as what my mother said. Whatever my mother would want me to do especially requires me to talk to people. I'll see, could kill me out of anger, but I won't do it. I already set my mind. I won't do it. With that experience, my thought was, I don't belong in the society where the professional and rich people are. I thought everyone doesn't really care about my own feeling. So I said, who cares? I can do everything by my own. But I think I just have the fear to be rejected. At the age of 15, my mother brought me in Manila to work in someone's store so that at least, according to her, I could buy my personal things. But be away from your family at that age was so lonely and sad. So I tried to be strong, knowing that I have to survive on my own. I read every night and day to learn, educating myself. And without higher education, a customer saw my skill and hired me to manage their stores in Magallanes and Quezon City. Then some hired me as a cashier in an establishment that having lots of money in just one night. I even managed their money and their book. I am sharing this to you not because I am proud I did it. It is easier for me not to tell this background of mine. And covering this is the reason why I am being belittled and stepped upon. But I just want to share how God can work in us in many ways and with anybody in his own mysterious way. All this and maybe more can hinder a, a life of faith and by caring and sharing. Thus, there is a need of inner healing for us to receive the grace that God wants to give and to do the will of the Lord without doubt and fear. Basis for inner healing. It is the Lord who can set us free. Jesus can free us from all the, that hinder us in our Christian life, from our resentment, trauma, insecurities, and others. And we believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, as it says in Hebrews 13, verse 8. Thus, he can take the memories and hurts in the past and heal us from the wounds that still remain and which affects our lives. Jesus can fill with his love all those places in us that have been empty for so long. Once they have been drained of the poison of past hurts and resentment, he will fill it with the Holy Spirit. You know, there is a saying that um, we can forgive but cannot forget. So how could be the memories of hurts would be erased? Oh yes, I could still remember what had happened with me on that day when I get hurt. But that memory doesn't hurt me anymore. The Holy Spirit taught me that it is a choice. Will I choose to be angry and bitter and be lifeless? Or choose to forgive, to have, a, to have peace and have life? I was hurt when I found out <clears throat> that my husband, sorry, may, may, may you rest in peace, who went abroad to have what we thought a good life for us as another woman and cannot support us anymore. Oh, well, that really hurts, especially when the time comes that I have to leave my two young children to survive and do not see them growing up. But since God healed me already and in peace, through God's grace, I looked for him and made him and his second family as part of my family. Once we are freed of past hurts and memories, we will be able to build up one another 
we can move on in our Christian life with total joy and confidence and peace from the Lord. Remember that good health is one of the basic things that God desires for us. You know, I have read from the book, Chicken Soup of the Soul. A father said his daughter was raped by his neighbor. They didn't tell to anybody. And since then, he was so angry with that man that he's been dreaming of killing that man in so many ways. By shooting him or by a knife and also thinking how to do it in real until he gets sick. Then the man that raped his daughter got sick with cancer. And when he was already dying, since the father was also religious, he thought, oh, this guy might die soon. So he decided to go and see him. He went there and asked for forgiveness because he was thinking of killing him yet every day. The man also asked for forgiveness for what he did to his daughter and died peacefully. And the father, with his peaceful mind, suddenly cured from his illness. Jesus desires to heal us. In Mark 1, 40 to 41, it is about physical healing. A leper came to Jesus and begged him, If you so will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do will it. Be clean. Jesus' ministry was not limited to physical healing. <clears throat> uh, he healed all kinds of diseases and sicknesses in Matthew 4. 23 to 24. When Jesus went around all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, and the people brought all their sick to him, and all those who are suffering, the possessed, the deranged, the paralyzed, and he healed them all. Jesus also gives strength for, Christ, for the Christian life. In Luke 22, 31 to 32, Simon, Simon, Satan has demanded to sift you like a grain, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and when you have recovered, you must strengthen your brothers. We could see in all of these passages that healing is Jesus' willing to each and every one, and when we get healed, we should also be an inspiration to others to give them strength. You know, like Peter, who repented after he denied Jesus, he became an inspiration to his brothers and led the church. Now, I will ask some questions. And as a sign of admitting the truth, it's like a confession. Please raise your hands if the question is applicable to you. But you can also close your eyes if you want. Now, maybe I will make you laugh first so you won't fall asleep. Huh? I'm sure you heard this before. Remember not too long ago in the Mass when the priest said, the Lord be with you. Our response was, and also with you. A mass was about to start. The priest gets to the altar and said, in, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And then he tapped the microphone and said, Something is not right with this microphone. And people replied, And so, and also with you. So please, Listen carefully. Have you been hurt? Are you nourishing a wounded heart from that hurt? Do you feel rejected, unloved, and inferior from family, relatives, co-workers, or sisters, brothers in the community? Do you have feelings of anger and a desire to retaliate or take revenge or feeling of bitter, bitterness and resentment? Do you feel that this has prevented your growth into a whole person, not able to develop all the gifts and talents God has given you for service to Him and others? Do you believe that God can heal you of your woundedness and make you whole again? Now, how hurts can be healed? Uh, there are four, uh, five here. Forgiveness, prayer for inner healing, counseling, sacrament of reconciliation or confession, celebration of the Mass. Number one, through forgiveness. 
There were two priests, Father Matt and Father Dennis, who were con conducting retreats and visiting psychiatric wards. At the retreats, when the participants were asked of when did they feel that they were very close to God, their reply was, on those days that they were hurt by a loved one, like when the spouse left them, or betrayed by someone very close to them, or someone very dear died. At the psychiatric ward, when they were asked of when did they experience the world was falling on them, the answer was the same. When they get hurt by loved ones and betrayed or lost someone. It is interesting to note that the same event had brought some to the psychiatric ward was the same event that brought others to the loving arms of God. What was the difference? It was the way that people dealt with the hurts brought about by these events, whether they, they were able to forgive or not. You know, I thank God. The Holy Spirit was and still is my own personal teacher. If not, I don't think I can do all of these things. But on those days, I thought I earned it myself, and so I was so proud of it. And I didn't know how to forgive them yet, then yet, so my personal and life um, personality and life was affected. Thus, when while often it is not easy, we must learn to forgive and have peace. And the key is love, as Mother Teresa said. But love God first. We can only learn to forgive if we love God. Now that it is necessary for us to forgive. Why? Simply because God forgave us. In Colossians 3.13, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And in Matthew 6.14-15, if you forgive others their wrongs, your Father in heaven will also forgive yours. If you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive you either. And we pray and give that condition to God every day by praying the Lord's Prayer. In Matthew 18, 21 to 22, Jesus told Peter that we should forgive not only seven times, but 77 times. But when, when the hurt is deep and well nursed, making forgiveness is difficult. So do not rely on your own power. Pray to Jesus for the power or the grace to forgive. Once we are able to forgive, we will experience freedom, which will allow us to be peaceful and joyful in our Christian life. You know, when we forgive, it looks like we are giving a favor to the other person who benefits from our forgiveness, right? But in reality, we are the main beneficiaries. Like what happened with the father who forgave the man who raped his daughter. He was healed. And I have read from a Reader's Digest a long time ago. A research about a cat. If cats are so angry, their saliva contains poison that could kill anybody. Now who knows what kind of poison our body could produce if we are so angry. That could probably eat us inside or could cause us a serious kind of sickness. Another way to heal our hurt is through prayer for inner healing. Sometimes we experience that even after we forgive, we still hurt get fearful or angry. Somehow we have not yet overcome that feeling that came with the negative experience that we had. Oftentimes we need to pray for inner healing for these hurts to be dealt with. And prayer is more powerful if it's prayed over by group or community. Group or community. As the Lord's promise that if there are two or more agreed in one prayer, the Father in heaven will give it to us. Other way of healing hurts is through counseling. This involves entering into a counseling relationship with a counselee, promises to obey directions given by the counsellor in order for that person to be better. Next is sacrament of reconciliation or confession. When we confess our sins and shortcomings, when we humble ourselves and admit that we made mistakes, we obtain God's forgiveness and spiritual healing that only God could give. God's word spoken through the priest who stands in the place of Peter 
gives us comfort and consolation. Last one, but most important, through the celebration of the Mass. We find healing in God's Word in the liturgy of the Word, especially Gospel. And the truth is, every single Mass is a healing Mass. We just have to believe and on the consecration of the liturgy of the Eucharist that Jesus continuously coming down and offer himself to us in the form of bread to redeem us always. When we receive the Holy Eucharist, we receive Jesus himself, our divine healer. He becomes alive in us and believe that he could heal us. The Lord wants to heal us completely, including our inner hurts. This can only be overcome through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are weak, but through His power, we will be strong and courageous. Have faith that God loves us and wants us all to be healed, but we need to do the first step. <clears throat> I used to be blinded by the hurts caused by others and some circumstances in my life and the sins and mistakes that I have committed. And because my heart and eyes of faith were covered with pain, the future was dark and uncertain. But most of all, the service to the Lord and these people were not really in the picture. My focus was only to myself and to my own feeling and hurts. But the Lord healed me when I opened my heart and mind to Him and prayed for a total and genuine repentance, to be able to forgive and love others. It was only then I was able to see that life is joyful in any situations where I am. I never realized that I harbored that hurt and bitterness inside me for so long, but I also never thought how that situation pierced my mother's heart and haunts her conscience all her life until almost at the hour of her death. She was sick and out, in and out of hospital for almost a year before she died in 2005, and I was calling her almost every day. <clears throat> then one day she said, Anak, I wish I just borrowed money from the rich people, so I was able to send you to school. Well, I was... I was, I know, I cannot believe it. I was shocked. I was hurt, but never thought that she was hurt and carried guilt all her life. She was affected because I questioned and complained, but she never said anything. Friends, I am sharing this to, to you because I am now giving glory to God for all those painful experiences. It was all meant to be, for me to learn so that my life could give, give him glory. Everything is not about me, not about us. It is about the Lord and his plan for our life. Beautiful things came out from all those ugly experiences of mine. As what the song says, I will give you treasure out of darkness. And Mama Mary's Magnificat, the Lord has done great things for me. I started to have a closer relationship with Jesus because no one I can come to but him, and he became my best friend and confidant. I trusted everything to him and to Mama Mary, especially my family. I am away with family almost all my life, but that is how God taught me on how to love others, whoever they are, like what Mother Teresa did. I should hold and take care of them in my heart, even they don't like me. That is also my own version of love any language. Love anybody and love any situation that comes my way. God taught me that the blessing is not about being professional or not being rich, but to be loved by God and be able to love and serve Him through others. She also said, um, Mother Teresa said, love begins at home. And so is prayer. I dragged my kids since they were small, not only church into, in the church, but we attended charismatic prayer meeting every week after school. And we prayed every night, uh, prayed the rosary every night. And that stays in their hearts, even I was not with them growing up. In fact, you know, at this moment, 
my son is one of the speakers in the couples uh, in-person CLS here in Illinois. And my grandkids were just about to be picked up by the kids coordinator for the Kids for Christ activity. My other son in the Philippines, my daughter-in-law said, he is more prayerful than her. Thank God. But we will always get hurt whether you want to follow Christ or not. I continuously experiencing to be rejected, ridiculed, humiliated in the presence of others, even in my service. And being told right on my very face that I, uh, I know nothing and probably not even know what I am doing or going to do. I do not fit with a job. And it's all because I do not have higher education. It hurts so much more than before, but the big difference is I didn't feel any anger, but sad instead, being sorry for the other person. And I now fully understand why Jesus, he was human then, in spite of being rejected, ridicule, ridiculed, abandoned, humiliated, and left alone, why in spite of the pain, grasping on his last breath, still managed to say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus taught me that it is not about what others did to me, but what I would do to others in response to God's love. Well, I'm not saying it is easy. There is still sharp edges in me that God needs to be polished. I know he's not done with me yet. And so, with all of us, I believe. Please listen attentively on this passage just from the book of Luke. Reflect on these words that Jesus gave us. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Don't be judged of others and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, full and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Together we will pray that in His grace our hearts will always be opened in His plan for us. But most of all, pray for genuine repentance and forgiveness and desire it for desire it because He desires it for you. God allows you, God allows us to get hurt for His own God, good purpose. God allows someone to be on our way, whether He is your husband, family members, or anybody for you or us to learn how to forgive and to love, to imitate Christ, to be holy and be able to serve others and be the woman of God that he wants us to be. I am inviting you to pray with me with all your heart and mind. Let us pray the general prayer for inner healing and make this as your own personal prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I thank you for your Son, Jesus, who came and died on the cross for me to bring me salvation from my sins and from the memories of past sins and hurts that prevent me from fully experiencing and trusting in your love and mercy. Oh Lord Jesus, I invite you to walk back through every second of my life to touch those parts of my life that need your healing touch. Touch my spirit to wash clean any unholiness in my family background, which could be impeding my ability to walk with you. Lord, please continue to walk through every second of my life. Go back and feel every void and feeling of un emptiness. Touch any loneliness during those times that I was left alone by myself when I needed most the company of others especially at those times when I needed to resolve critical issues in my personal life. Remove all feelings of fear, any fear that prevented me from doing what I needed to do, any fears of rejection, any fear of getting hurt again. Lord Jesus, there were times when I was faced with problems 
and difficult situations, and I made mistakes and wrong decisions, and in the process, experienced failure, embarrassment, disappointments. Grant me the grace to accept my mistakes and inadequacies and to learn from them. Dear Lord, I ask you to heal me of any real or imagined rejection caused by anybody. Restore my confidence in people and help me to trust and love again. And Lord, please remove that painful memory of the sudden death of a loved one that I have difficulty accepting to this day. Give me the grace to accept peacefully your divine will. Lord Jesus, I ask you to restore any broken relationships I still have with anyone. Please give me the humility to accept my shortcomings and mistakes. For the times that I hurt others and failed them and contributed to the breaking of relationships, Lord, I ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have forgiven me. Grant me the grace and strength to forgive those who have hurt me. Those have created me unkindly, have treated me unkindly and made life for me unpleasant in any way. Thank you, Father, for the gift of forgiveness through Jesus, for mending my broken brokenness and for making me whole again. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Help me to nourish this new life that you have given me today until the end of my days. I belong to you, and I give you all the praise and all the glory, now and forever. Amen. And in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, this is just the start of the healing process. The hurts may or may not immediately go away. We need to continue to pray for inner healing for, the, for its other. The success of the healing process will depend on, to a large extent on your desire to be healed and your cooperation with the work of the Holy Spirit. Knowing human limitations and weaknesses, people will continue to make mistakes and in the process, hurt you, hurt us. When this happens, you must be willing to forgive the other person, whether he or she asks for forgiveness or not. Maybe you can call someone you haven't talked to for a while later. And if you're the one who has done the hurting, then ask for forgiveness. It is important to realize that the virtues of humility, generosity, and patience need to be operative for you. For you. To experience meaningful and genuine healing in your relationships. Let us continue to meditate for what we have learned while listening to this music. Thank you everyone. We are truly blessed beyond bounds because we have an amazing God. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace. That taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed My chains are gone Oh, secure. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucy. That was a truly touching testimony. Thank you for your humble sharing. And also thank you for the prayer. We all needed that today. Your powerful talk and inner healing is also much uh, needed as we go through these trying times. Um, we are still facing the global pandemic of COVID and it has robbed us of loved ones. It has made us insecure due to lo job loss. And now we are facing the fear of war. Things are just happening all at once. We needed to be reminded that God is in control. And Mother Teresa said it in the video that you shared, that every darkness we come across in our lives is a sign that we need to get a greater grip and accept it as a cross that we have to bear at that time. We need to cling to Christ with blind faith. He is the only one who can deliver us and heal us from within. So sisters, um, I invite you to just throw all your cares and worries and hurts at the foot of the cross of Jesus. Forgive as God forgives, even if it, se even if it seems really unfair. It is through the Good Fridays that we experience that we can look forward to the glory of Easter in our lives. So being healed from within frees us to be the best version of ourselves. It will allow us to move on and rebuild our lives for Jesus Christ. And with that, I call on our next uh, speaker, um, Joyce Bayona from St. Charles, Illinois. the poor more and more become the hope of salvation for mankind because we are going to be judged on what we have done to them what we have been to them how we have accepted them this is what you said to the senate uh, yes. committee in washington that the poor with the hope yes. of mankind yes. how did they take that they took it very well and i think it has had a tremendous uh, influence because they have already working at it 
to, to answer the call of the poor of the world. Because I feel if the world today turns its back to the poor, I think they are turning their back to Christ. You talked, Mother, a, a few moments ago about the thousands that you have taken into your home uh, in Calcutta. Now, Calcutta is a very large place and the poor are very many. How many do you turn away? How many have you not got room for? I don't know. Uh, up to now, we have never had to turn anybody away. Never? Because there is always there's one more bed, one more plate of rice, one more blanket to cover. How is that? Well, I don't know. Again, we take God at his word because uh, we depend solely on divine providence that comes through to us through the love of the people. And so he has taken care uh, uh, and he has shown such thoughtfulness and such kindness for our people in small details. And so uh, we have no reason but uh, to, to take, to accept what he has said, that we are more important to him than the birds of the air and the flowers of the garden. Lucy. Okay. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I am Joyce Bayona and I am from Illinois. My talk is about rebuilding our lives for Christ. So we have started the process of healing as we heard it from, from Lucy Galiesa. Now we start the process of rebuilding our lives for Christ. Although we have come from different situations and states of life, we share something in common. We have at one time or another experienced hurts, loneliness, and trials which have driven us to seek the Lord. But now we are also seeing how all of this have a purifying purpose. Everything was for the purpose of the Lord, and that purpose is to bring us close to him. Now, when familiar fears and loneliness begin to bother us, we now welcome them as an intimate time with the Lord once more. We now see how, how our past and our present have made us God's sources of help and comfort to others who have undergone or are currently experiencing pain and isolation. You know, I have read in the Bible one time that God comforts us. And so we have to experience God's comfort so we will be able to share it when we meet others who are experiencing the same pain we have when Jesus comforted us. So then it is our turn to let them feel the comfort that we receive from God. To rebuild our lives and to help rebuild the lives of others, we need to grow into holy women of God. What are the characteristics of a holy woman of God? A holy woman of God has faith, steadfastness and faithfulness and love. What are some of the signs of a woman of faith? A woman of faith has a joyful spirit. She can laugh at the future because she is confident of God's protection and 
providence. We see this in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. And in Luke chapter, first chapter, verses 46 to 47, it says, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Second, a woman, a holy woman of faith has serenity and peace. She knows her priorities. Just like in the story of Martha and Mary, you remember that part that Martha went to Jesus and asked Jesus to tell Mary to help her. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. A woman of faith is not anxious. In Matthew chapter 6, verse, verses 25 to 34, it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither saw nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than them? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of this. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? You know, these Bible, Bible verses meant so much to me. In the year 2010, I lost my job. I was told that I have only until July 9, 2010. They were giving me two, two weeks notice. I was thinking something not ordinary happened to me on that day. You know, like hearing that you will be losing your job is something that is going to make you cry, make you worry, or make you feel bitter. And my reaction when I was told that I'm, I have only two weeks to work in that uh, company my reaction was not normal because what I said, yes, it's beautiful. I can do all the mission trips that I wanted to do. And I can see the Lord every day because it will allow me to come to church every day. Looking back, I said, was I crazy? Because everyone who would be losing her job would be sad, but I was so joyful. It was then I realized that maybe the joy was coming from what I have inside of me, my longing to go on mission trips, my longing uh, for that opportunity to tell everyone I meet what a loving God I have. So two years, I did not have a job. And I say those were the most joyful and most peaceful years of my life. What sustained me are these verses that I just read to you.
I wasn't scared that all I lived off was on my employment benefits. And I was very confident. I wasn't anxious. One friend asked me, were you able to get health insurance? I said, yes. And then she asked me again, which company was it? Was it expensive because of your age? And I go, no, my insurance comes from above and it is free. I don't have a job, but right now I work for the Lord. He is my employer and he is very generous. And I was able to sustain that. And I was so confident all those days. But you know, when your faith gets deeper and deeper, your love for the Lord gets deeper and deeper as well. Someone is not happy. One day, I woke up, I read my email, and there they are, five company email from the, uh, from the credit card company, from the gas company, the water, the electric. It's like telling me, all those bills are due. And that's when it hit me that I did not have money. And for the first time in my life, I had to open, break open my piggy bank. And tears rolling down my cheeks, I was gathering all the quarters, the nickels, the dimes together, trying to count how much money I have. I, it felt so pitiful. It felt so humiliating counting those. And I was asking myself, why am I at that point that I have to count all those change? I who have helped all my family members, I who have loved others more than myself, but you know, that afternoon I had to join an assembly and the worship leader talked about Sirach 2, which says, if you chose to serve the Lord, you will be tested in fire, just like gold is tested on fire. And then the music ministry played power of your love. So when it got to the point where it says, hold, hold me close, never let me go, I started crying. And then I realized, remember the story on Peter walking on the water? When he took his gaze from, Mary, from, from the Lord, he started to sink. You know, all those time, from the day I was laid off from work up to that moment, up to the day before that day. I have always focused on the Lord. And then one fateful day, I had my focus on my bills to pay and the money that I don't have. Then I realized God is there. I, for a while, I forgot that he has promised that he will never leave me alone. He promised that he will never forsake me. So I realized that my God is always bigger than my problems. And so I was back to looking at the Lord again, focusing my life towards him. And he gave me back the joy that he gave me, the joy and the peace that he gifted me with. From that day on, everything was perfect. I did not have to count nickels and dimes again. 
God has provided me with everything I needed. Things that I lost when I lost my job, he started giving them back to me many times, more than what he has taken away from me. So let us not worry. Remember, it said here, can any of you wor by worrying at a single hour to your span of life? And the answer is no. Because worrying is actually like sitting on a rocking chair. You keep on rocking and rocking. You can rock the chair all morning and it will not bring you anywhere. You are still stuck there. So why worry? And especially with us ladies, we don't like to worry so much because, you know, we don't want those wrinkles on our faces. And if we worry, you know, it also shows. So a woman of faith is not anxious. There is order in her spiritual, physical, emotional life, as well as in her home and in her relationships. Her prayer life is also in place. In Proverbs 31 verses 25 to 27, it says, strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Now, second characteristic of a holy woman of God is steadfastness and faithfulness. A woman who, has, who is steadfast and faithful is a woman of inner strength. And our model is our Blessed Mother Mary. In Luke 10, verse 42, it says, There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part. She had the strength to follow what God says. Mary agreed to be mother of Jesus fully aware of the scandal it can bring. A woman who is steadfast and faithful also has initiative. She is rooted in the knowledge of God's ways. She finds out how she can help get the work done. And she's always mo motivated by a real desire to help. In Proverbs 31, verse 16, it says, she considers a field and buys it. With the fruits of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She also has humility. A humble woman is teachable. When she does one thing and somebody tells her, that there is a different way of doing it. She is accepting the teaching. She follows it. She is not mad that somebody is telling her to do it differently. The humble woman is also willing to serve God and others with no desire for self-importance and recognition. She just serves and serves without desiring that she will be given credit at the end. She needs no recognition. And she is also open to correction. She is also a woman who is physically strong and healthy. In Proverbs 31, verse 17, it says, she girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She actually takes care of her family's health. She appreciates the value of nutrition, proper diet, and exercise. And we who are mothers are familiar with this. Don't we all 
take care of our family's health? Do we, don't we teach our children the value of nutrition, the proper diet? We choose the food that our children can eat. Also, the woman who has steadfastness and faithfulness does not abuse herself. She's always conscious that she is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Her body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So everything she does is in moderation. And she also seeks guidance from others and shares her skills with others. Her mind and her spirit are well nourished. It's nourished by God's word through daily scripture reading and by reading good Christian books. It would be good if we will have a goal of being able to read one book each month. Now, we go on the third characteristic of a holy woman of God, and it is love. What is Christian love? Christian love is defined by Jesus as we see it in John chapter 13, verse 34. It says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. The love that Jesus tells us to do is Christian love. And Christian love is agape. It's a deep, selfless love for brothers and sisters in our faith. Now, what are the characteristics of Christian love? It is unselfish. In Matthew 22, verse 39, it says, and a second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then Christian love is also sincere. In Romans 12, verse 9, it says, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to do what is good. Our love must be sin sincere. It should not be superficial. It should be a deep love for our brothers and sisters. L love is also abounding. In the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 12, it says, And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for, love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. You know, the saying, love is not love until it is given away. So we have to keep on loving and giving the love for our brothers and sisters. Correct, a Christian love is also intense. It says here in 1 Peter 1, 22, now that you, are, you have purified your souls by your obedience the, to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. Loving is a decision. It is not a feeling. Feelings change. And your love should not be based on feelings because then you can love in one minute and then the next minute you don't love. It should never be based on feelings. It should be a conscious decision to love. What is the source of this love? The source of this love is God. In the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 11 and 19, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us 
and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Our service. Love must be the foundation for a Christian service. When we serve, we serve because we love. We serve out of love. We don't serve because we were told to, and we don't have love in the way we do these things. We should always have love in everything we do, especially in Christian service. How can we rebuild our lives for Christ? First, make a decision that you will do what it takes to build a new life in Christ. Then evaluate your life. Ask yourself, what elements are not in God's dominion in my life? Am I honest? Am I lazy? Am I gossiping? Then you also review your relationships. Your relationships in your family. Are you talking to all of the members of your family? Or is there somebody in your family that has separated himself from the rest of, of you because he is mad? We have to check on that. Also in your workplace, do you have good relationship with your coworkers? in our community, and also among your friends. Then you review your values, your attitudes, your weaknesses, strengths, your entire life situation. We should be able to pinpoint what our weaknesses and strengths are. I know one of my weaknesses is that I am impatient. But my greatest strength, I think, is I persevere. I always make sure I work hard and make it happen. And then you prepare and implement your plan. So how do you do this? You identify the areas in your life which need to change or to improve. And then have the right mind and attitude. Be open to the leading of the spirit. Be obedient to God's word. You prepare a plan with goals, with time frames, and specific things to do. Prioritize your goals. Be realistic in your expectations. Also, pursue your plans with decisiveness and determination. When you put on that plan, you make that decision that you will follow through, that you will do it. And then periodically evaluate your progress against your plan. Be flexible. Do not hesitate to change if much, if such is needed. Repent if you have not been faithful and steadfast. Conclusion. We are living in a society where it is difficult to live a Christian life. But we are not disheartened or discouraged, for we know we are a victorious people. We are women who hope. We are women called by God, women set apart. Let us be proud of this and be faithful and grateful to him. We are given the task of building true Christian lives. Let us build with the Lord. In Psalm 127 verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. So in everything that we do, we have to include Lord, the Lord in it. We do everything with the Lord. And lastly, have no doubts or fears. Jesus promised to be with us. In Matthew 28, verse 20, it says, 
And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So, brothers and sisters, when we go, when we get to a crossroad and we don't know what to do, when we feel like giving up, when we feel that you don't want to try anymore, just remember God promised he will always be with us. Maybe we don't see him or we don't hear him, but he is there with us. Let us not be scared to face tomorrow because every morning that we wake up, he gives us new hope. Every day that we are awake, he gives us opportunity to love and to serve him. Let us always know that he is faithful. His plans for us are good. They are to give us a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It's the one thing that sustains me. Good or bad, I always believe God's plan for my life is beautiful. If it's ugly today, I know it is that ugliness is still part of that beautiful plan that he has for me. So I wake up every morning looking forward to that beautiful plan. And so far, God is good. He gave us grace every day. And for that, May God be praised. Thank you. Your share. Oh, um, Sister Lucy, can you please play the video? My sharer is Lily Elsnick from Missouri. sisters good afternoon praise and thanks be to god that we're able to get together today even just via zoom my name is lily elsonick i'm from st louis missouri and have been handmade since 2004 18 years how time flies so my family and i have been following the mfc way of life and are very thankful to be part of this ministry mfc is my extended family especially my sisters and brothers here in st louis my sharing about my personal experience regarding call to holiness is not very unusual. I'm pretty sure some of you had the same religious upbringing and nurturing while growing up in the Philippines, where Catholic faith and Christianity is the utmost way of life. We learned right from childhood that there is God who created us and that he loves us. When I was growing up, my mother taught me and my six siblings about God, how to pray, how to follow his teachings and be a good person. She took us to church every Sunday and we took turns going to her um, devotions, one of them to Our Lady of Perpetual Help. We went to public school, but we had religion class. But overall, it was our mother who molded our faith and she hoped and prayed that as we got older and ready to pursue our own path of life that we will remember. Then we got older. We were out on our own to face the world as adults. Did I remember what my mother taught me? Did I continue living my faith? I wish I could say yes, totally. Unfortunately, it was not the case. As I lived my young life, working and enjoying a good job in the city, living away from home, enjoying friends and good times, I became lazy and neglected my duties as a Catholic, as a Christian. Yes, I kept my faith, but sadly, I took my responsibilities for granted. I still went to church, but it no longer became a priority. It dwindled down to just occasional or only when it was convenient or on special holidays, especially when I was home with my mother. I was enjoying life and freedom in a secular world that slowly I started to drift away from what my mother taught me. How disappointed I had been to my mother and especially to God. 
eventually it was time to settle down. I got married and had my first child. My baby, da my baby daughter was born. It was that evening when I was breastfeeding my baby for the first time. It was just her and I in the hospital room at that time. I was looking at my baby's face feeling very happy and fulfilled and then it hit me. I felt this overwhelming feeling of gratitude for such a precious, precious gift. My eyes filled with tears. I felt God's great love for me, His unconditional love. Despite all of my shortcomings during my younger life, He still loved me and blessed me with such a beautiful and perfect child, a daughter whom I will love more than life itself. I promised myself to make sure she grew up knowing God and His great love for, for us ring a bell that was my mother talking right then and there i knew what i had to do i will return and rebuild my life fully for him to serve god through serving the church and others i thank and honor my mother for all that she taught me my son was born later and with the support of my husband i continued to give glory to god and my endeavor to keep my catholic faith as utmost in my family's way of life Later on, we were introduced to Couples for Christ, where we continued to grow in our faith in this ministry now called Missionary Families of Christ. I especially appreciate being with my handmade sisters. I thank God for you, sisters. God has given me so many blessings in life. I thank Him especially for giving me the most precious gifts in my two children that woke up my spirit and my whole being. I am a grandmother now and enjoying yet more precious gifts from God in my two adorable grandchildren. God continues to bless and guide me as I strive to serve Him and the church and in my relationships with family, brothers and sisters in the ministry, friends and community. God is good. Praise be to God. Thank you very much and God bless. Wow, what powerful talks and sharings. Thank you so much, Joyce and Lily. You were truly, truly spiritually inspiring. You both reminded us again, just how special we are to God. He loves us and takes care of us. So even when we face difficulties and challenges in our lives, we are not to lose sight that God is with us through it all and allow him to take charge. We only need to let go of pride, the belief that it is up to us. Let go of unnecessary anxiety and focus on God's leading. He is opening a window for you somewhere. So don't worry, be happy as a song says. So that is the last uh, topic in our um, uh, session for today. I thank you everyone for joining us here at Mary's uh, Virtual Coffee Club. Um, on behalf of our team here in the Mid-North, um, the speakers and the sharers and our uh, technical teams, uh, we truly appreciate your presence and your friendship. We hope that you were able to soak up inspiring words and encouragement from the talks and the sharings. We pray that the lessons you learned today will strengthen you in faith as you go back to your daily life. Remember, we are all called to be holy and called to serve God and others with our special skills and talents. God loves us and is the true source of healing grace. When we are unburdened of any hurts and fears, we are more able to focus on serving God and others. So I encourage you to take uh, courage, trust in God, and rebuild our lives for Christ. So at this point, um, I would like to invite you actually to ask you for a favor. If you look into the chat box, you will see a request there to um, please answer this survey that, we're, um, that we have for um, the Mary's Virtual Coffee Club. Um, if I may share my screen. Um, So once you click on that button, 
um, where the survey is, uh, it'll open to this, Mary's Virtual Coffee Club Facebook Posts Evaluation. And you just click on Next. It'll take you about two minutes to go through all of these uh, questions. And we hope that you're able to do it today. If not, you can always um, uh, go back to it uh, at your convenience. We will definitely share this uh, with um, your friends. And for those who are handmaids, we'll, we, you know, your leaders have this and they can share it with you. So we'd really appreciate it if you can honestly um, answer these uh, questions for us. Another thing that I would like to share is uh, an invitation to next month's Mary's Virtual Coffee Club um, activity. Um, oh, sorry. Here we go. So next month, we're gonna have it on May 21st, 2022. Again, the same time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Central, and 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, it's going to be a flower festival in honor of Mama Mary. Okay. So that is really it for today. Um, Truly, truly are grateful that we have this platform, the Mary's Virtual Coffee Club, almost every month or um, at least twice uh, every two months this year um, for us to share, to share with each other, spend time with each other and share um, God's messages. So um, in closing, we'd like to invite you uh, to join me in prayer as we say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you have uh, spoken to us today. We thank you, Lord, for such inspiring uh, speakers, Lord God, who humbly shared um, their faith, their experiences with us, and uh, from which we were able to draw strength and inspiration and encouragement, Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, who always, always is with us. We understand that and we believe that as we were gathered here, you were with us, Lord, and you were forever and you were I'm so sorry. And you were able to um, speak to us, Lord God. Speak to us truly, Lord, and humbly. So thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. And as we go on, we ask that you cover us with your mantle of protection always, with your most precious blood. And we also um, ask you to keep on holding us, Father, in the palm of your hand. Mama Mary, you're a mother. We thank you for your constant intercession. We thank you for your inspiration. You are truly our model of womanhood, Mama Mary. And we continue to ask you to pray for us and um, intercede for us that we may come closer to being like you. Thank you so much. And before we end, um, we like to honor, honor Jesus Christ, honor the Lord, and celebrate our faith, celebrate our being daughters of a wonderful God as we, as we sing the song.
Ella, you're muted. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Good. everyone. Thank you for being yes. here. Yeah, thank Good you, to see everyone. All the speakers. Thank oh, you. Good to see you all. Hindi na ako pinagpapawisan. Thank God. I forgot.